So if you if you managed to get your device to work, uh, that's great. Um, going back to my instructions here, again, there's a certain point. Well, if it doesn't work, here's a few possibilities to try. Unfortunately, I hope you don't get to number five because it just if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I can't I can't help you. Um, I I have these uh, I've got these three devices that I've been using throughout the years um, to test. I, I got this Motorola Droid uh, X or something, and it and that works fine. But now it's it's pretty old, and the animation's slow and everything. And you know, I got this one about two years ago, year and a half ago, and it works still pretty well. And then I saw this one that I couldn't pass up at forty nine dollars, so I went for it. And so. If, if it still doesn't quite work on your device, that's why we have emulators. Maybe borrow a device because this stuff works. Uh, we can confirm with several people that it works. We're still putting the puzzle together, um, but this is one down, perhaps. So I'm going to close sheet number four. And I've got the sheet number five in the network folder now. So if you haven't copied it yet, let's take a look at it. So go to your network and you will see sheet number five. Classroom data on the network and you'll see sheet number five. This is Cordova workflow number one. So after all the components are set up, we will create a basic app. Now this one that we're working with here, uh, we, we're going to see what we've got in just a moment, and then uh, we're actually going to create a starting point. Uh, so we're going to skip a little bit of this for the moment, but as an overview, here's a list of some of these commands. Right, CLS to clear the screen, CD folder name, CD dot dot, DIR. Here's one I haven't mentioned yet. Press the up arrow to cycle through the last commands. So here I want to run my last command again. And so what I'm going to do is instead of typing it on the keyboard, I can just press up. And it'll bring back the last command. I press up again, it'll pre bring me back my previous command. And I, keep in, I can keep going back up in history. You know, all the way back then when I did all those plugins. If I press down, it takes me forward in the history. So this is going to be a time saver. As I was helping a few of you, and I did something quickly, how did I do it? I pressed up, because it brought back the previous command. Now, if you press escape, I don't have it on the sheet, but if you press escape, it'll cancel what you're trying to write. So make a note of that. Pressing up will bring back your last command, which could be a big time saver. Uh, I didn't did not mention it last time, I believe, but I'll mention it now. We're going to start to then work on our USB drive because this work that we did is on the desktop of this computer, and if you forget to take it with you, you lost it because the computer doesn't save it. That's okay. What we're working with right now is not mission critical, so if we lose what we have today, that's okay. But I'm telling you here in the command prompt, if you want to switch between your hard drive, the C drive, and your USB drive. You can switch to it by saying its drive name. Unfortunately, I don't believe we can look up here like, what are all my drive names? I can't, I can't ask for that, I think. You have to look on a regular old computer window. And here it shows me, OK, my USB drive is on F. Maybe on yours, it's G or D or something. I don't know. On your particular home computer, it'll probably be D. But on us, we've got a C drive, and an E drive, and a T drive, and a V drive. So what I'm saying is to switch between the drives in that command prompt, I would just type V colon, and we switch to it. That's it. We don't type CD, because we're not changing directory. We're changing a drive. So you just type the name of the drive, colon, enter, to get practice with that. This is my F drive. I'm going to type F colon. And asks, I'm on the F drive. Question. Sure. Yes. Um, in your end part um, installation, uh -huh. then the sentence you wrote said, at the end of the day, everybody type 
the percentage mm -hmm. and on the phone. Mm -hmm. The total of the five something. But I have four hyphen statistics and I'm wondering should I put a four slash or backslash before I type what people are asking me to type? Why should I you, if it's not there, you should type a semicolon. The semicolon is the one that delineates each particular item. So if you're missing a semicolon at the very end of yours, type a semicolon and then type what's on the sheet. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so simply typing in the drive letter takes you to the drive. There I'm on my, on my USB drive. And then C colon takes me back to the C drive. Now... <clears throat> We're going to do this to create the basic app uh, next time, but I I'm just showing this is to create a, a basic app, um, which we will do, and then we will edit something called the config XML file. So this is, this is coming, but before we do that, let's back up a little bit. I'm going to minimize all of this. We were spending our time inside the command prompt here, but this is still all regular folders and such. Let's do this. Uh, you can minimize everything. And then on a regular, you know, the windows here, I see my test file on the desktop. If you don't see it on your desktop, it's probably inside of the user folder. But we put it on the desktop. Double click it to open that folder. And if we had done DIR, we would see this. But here's what we're seeing something called hooks, platforms, plugins, www, and config XML. We're going to take a moment to dissect a little bit of this. Um, we can have a variety of platforms, right? Our main core code could then be compiled and distributed to the different platforms. So all the platform-specific code will be in there. If you open platforms, right now it shows here's the code for Android and here's the code for browser. If we had set up our Firefox platform or our iOS platform, it would be listed there. Hooks are extra features that we can add that, uh, that can give us more functionality and such. All of that's going to be stored in there. There's not much in there. Plugins, if you open that, here's all the plugins I installed previously. We, we never really do anything in this folder, however. It's just their information. But all the plugins that we installed are listed there. If I'm going to uninstall a plugin, I'm not going to delete it from here. I'm going to type the command, Cordova plugin remove, and then remove the plugin, or else things will break if I simply delete this folder. We're going to remove plugins a little bit later. Right now, we've activated all the plugins, which is not the ideal thing that we want for a real app. Because what if we have an app, like for this college, that lets you, you know, save classes and, and do that sort of thing? Um, it would be overkill to have our app have the ability to record media. Like, people would want to download the app and it would say, this app uses these permissions. It uses the camera, it uses the battery, it uses geolocation, it uses files, it uses media capture. People are going to say, why does this app need to access my microphone? So right now we've activated all the permissions. But for a real app, we're going to take out the ones we don't need because you're going to scare people. Why would that basic calculator app be asking to check my contact list? It's going to steal my friend's phone numbers. So right now we've activated them all just to use them and learn how they work and then we'll deactivate the ones we don't need later. If you open the WW folder, this is where we're going to then have our HTML and CSS and our JavaScript. And it almost works if we simply copy all the work that we did last month and dump it in here. Almost. I have a sheet, of course, that tells you exactly what we need to do in Cordova workflow number two. But this is where a fully functional web project exists. So anything we put in here that is a website then almost magically then gets upgraded to an Android app. So we might be dying to know what do we have in here. Let's right-click that index file, edit with Notepad++. We're going to continue to edit it with the software that we used last month to edit our code. Because it's just HTML code, CSS code, JavaScript code. So I get here a 50-line HTML file. 
HTML5 with a section on the license to show that this code is given out as is, there's no contract and so forth. This is without warranties, so if it so that if it suddenly crashes your phone, too bad, it's no warranty. But that never happens. And then after that, HTML head and so forth. And then there's another comment in here, which I'll explain in more detail a little later. But there's some important co important considerations here. Uh, skipping that, we've got meta. We've seen meta before. But now there's this is a brand new thing. HTTP equivalent content security policy. Content equals a bunch of stuff. In order to keep your app as safe as possible, some things, because this is no longer going to be a simple website. It's going to be an app. And an app could be subject to various security vulnerabilities. So that line right there is protecting this sort of sandboxing it so that it doesn't do weird things unexpectedly. Um, one of the things, for example, if we go back to the comment here, it's disabling the use of inline script in order to mitigate cross... What does it stand for again? Cross security... What does XSS stand for again? Cross security... Cross security scripting vulnerabilities. That's saying that we will not be able to add some JavaScript directly to our HTML file in order to have more security. Um, that's all happening in this section here. We can change that, of course, later. We've got another meta tag, format detection telephone no. Uh, the evolution of mobile devices has been going on for a while. And jQuery, or Phone, PhoneGap and Cordova, was not the first to attempt to try to do what this project does. Uh, but it has been evolving to one of the big, most famous ones. And so there were other ways to make this work. One of them was that we would have a meta tag that we would say, this project is for telephones. But that standard sort of has fallen by the wayside. Now we've got the more responsive web design approach. So this meta tag, in short, is just sort of dealing with an old standard that really isn't relevant anymore. We have meta name MS application tab highlight content. No. We, we are taking an HTML file and making it an Android app, or a Windows app, or an iPhone app, whatever. And just like on a real website, you could tap and hold to select the text and copy it like a website, it'll, it'll break the illusion if we can do that in your app. Because like, let's say on Facebook or Instagram, you know, to select the, the word Instagram, it doesn't let you select the word Instagram. It lets you select what people wrote, but not the pieces of the interface that are the interface. That is disallowing MS application compatible devices to tap it to highlight it, like a real app. So that's a good one there. Here's the viewport again. User scalable, no. Initial scale, one. And a few more safeguards to make it feel even more like a native app. Maximum scale, one. Minimum scale, one. It's locking in the zoom, so you can't zoom in and out like a website. And device width, well, it spreads out the app to fill as much of the width as possible of the device. That's what I'm seeing here. That's why it looks like a full screen app, like a real app. So we've seen part of that before. There's a link to a style sheet in the style sheet folder, which we'll look at a little later, which makes this very boring app look boring, right? Gray background and green color. We'll look at that later. A title that says Hello World. I don't see Hello World anywhere in the app. Why? <laughs> What's that? This is this Hello World is, is done by um, the, the dot writer. Transfer over. If we look here on the tag that's being used, we also see that it's a title tag, and the title tag would appear where in a web browser? At the very top. But there's no tabs on an app. That's why that never displays, because there's no tab. So this title doesn't just is just it doesn't show up it's not used as an app so that can technically say anything or nothing however it's recommended to still have a title tag so it's compliant this can be left alone or you can empty it and later on we'll see the trick that it could fill itself in but again it doesn't show up anywhere so it's moot we've got a body which is actually relatively short I'll skip some things I'll skip down to script we've got a script We've got a reference to a JavaScript library called Cordova.js. 
but wait a minute, I don't see cordova.js in the folder structure. I just simply see index. And even, even if I look inside the JS folder, the JavaScript folder, there's no Cordova file here. This is always confusing to beginners. You will not see a Cordova.js file in your WW folder. If I go over to Platforms, Android, Platform WW, there's Cordova in there. Assets, WW, there's Cordova in there. So the Android-specific version has the proper files at the moment we built it. So we're not going to see Cordova.js within the WW folder. We're going to do all of our work in the WW folder. We don't really need to touch the other folders. It happens behind the scenes. Uh, and so this looks like it's pointing to nothing, but it points to the right thing once we click, once we type Cordova run Android or Cordova build Android, it, it just works. So don't be alarmed that we don't see Cordova.js. Then we have another reference to another script inside the JS folder, index.js. So we'll look at that in just a bit. The actual body is very simple in this case. It, it shows, obviously, it's a very simple app. There's a div with a class called app. There's a heading 1, Apache Cordova. And if you look on your app, either emulated or real, it says Cord Apache Cordova. What if we change that to say Campus App, or whatever your name is. Change that, line 40. Put in your name there. Anything you want. Next, we've got a div. Remember, the div is, is, is a generic container, but it's got two interesting things, an ID and a class. And the ID is device ready, the class is blink. We'll see how that makes sense in a bit. Then two paragraphs, connecting to device and device is ready. That's what I'm seeing on the device. For fun, instead of it saying device is ready, I want it to say ready to rock. And then instead of connecting to the device, we'll say, please wait. How do you do the shortcut of just copying word by word? What do you mean? If you hold something down and then you just copy those two or three words, how do you do that? What's the shortcut to highlight? Like this? But you're doing it word by word, weren't you? Letter by letter. Letter by letter? I was typing it. Or do you mean like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, control shift arrow keys. So control shift left selects the whole word, and then control shift next one right there. Mm -hmm. So the, the these are the messages that will appear on screen. You might have seen the, you might have seen the previous connected to device briefly. When then it connected, it went directly to the other one. Now we're making it say, "Please wait," and ready to rock. This has a, a class here couple of classes, event and listen. There's a space here, which is important, which I'll talk about it later. But I want to see the results of my hard work. I could save it and run it like we've been doing all of last month. Let's try that. Save it. Run. Launch Firefox. But it's not going to quite work because we're trying to launch now an Android project. Even though it's still HTML-based, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hang on please wait forever. It will never say device is ready because we're not really on a device. We're on a web browser. Well, you, you might say, you say we can also run it in Chrome. Yeah, try running it in Chrome and it still won't work because right now we're having Chrome behave like a web browser instead of an Android device. So instead, make sure you make these changes Go back to command prompt and type Cordova run browser. Now we're saying run this project as an Android device through the browser, specifically Google Chrome. You need Google Chrome for this to work. Press enter. You'll get a scary pop-up that says something about writing to the directory is not compatible or something. Just ignore it. Google Chrome cannot read and write to this directory. Whatever. Click OK. Browser opens up. 
and then it should load up in a moment. But if not, we've also got the Cordova run or emulate Android and Cordova run Android. Sometimes it's finicky, but um, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna wait a moment. It says it's deploying. Something's happening on my device. Uh, it's coming up, and then right there, Campos app, ready to rock. Okay, so it didn't. It was anticlimactic. Didn't show up on my browser, unfortunately. Not sure why, but uh, it showed up on my real device. Let me try my. Let me try my uh, emulator again. Remember, you press up, and it'll bring back your previous commands. Cordova emulate Android. Hmm. So that time it didn't bulk. And here it's running on my virtual device. Capital set, ready to rock. So again, we're just going to be editing HTML. We spent this these two days to set up our foundation. And then it's going to be a matter of taking the app we made last month, putting it into this project, and massaging it. Because it we, we can dump it in there, and it kind of works. But we still have to deal with a few things. Back to Notepad. There's no, there's no mention here about that graphic and my colors and all of that, well, that's been separated to the appropriate spot. If we wanted to deal with the design of the app, that's in the CSS file. So if I go back to the folder, open the CSS folder, we have index.css. If you edit that in Notepad, here is 116 lines, there's a license up there again, and a few things that are here. The very first bit of code here, asterisk, and then curly braces, body. We've seen this is a CSS selector for body, and over here is a class.app. Here's a media query. You haven't talked about those before. Another tag, another class. The very first one that appears is very special. This one here is a wild card. Therefore, this is applying to everything throughout the whole project. Every P tag, every body tag, every class, everything. The asterisk applies this to everything. And what it's specifically doing in this case, WebKit tap highlight color invisible. Make transparent any tapped links. That kind of works in concert with what we saw in the HTML file that says on some devices, if you tap and get a highlight, nullify that. This one is saying for other devices, if someone taps to select, nullify that. Don't let it highlight because then it doesn't look like an app or behave like an app. So it's creating basically an invisible highlight. Similar to that to the body. WebKit touch callout none. WebKit text size adjust none. User select none. So that's also in that similar vein. It's it's disabling this stuff that would make it feel like a website instead of an app. We're setting a background color here, which is a simple gray color. But then more impressively, then we're setting these particular tricks where we do a gradient. If we play with this, you know, instead of just that gray color, we could put red. And then over here, we've got a gradient going from this color to that color. Another way to say it, this color to that color. Another way to say it, this color to that color. We have different ways to say the same thing because this particular project could go on different devices, on an iPhone and an Android, on a Windows phone. And these different ways here would 
encompass all of the possible ways to to say the same thing. So for fun, let's do this. Let's say, let's make it really obvious. Line 27. Remove that, even the, astro, uh, the pound sign, and just type red. We'll have a big, beautiful red background. And we'll say linear gradient from red to green. That'll be nice and ugly. We'll do the same thing on this next line here. So wherever you see any of those references to a color, we don't know exactly how it'll look, doesn't matter. We're just changing those references from red to green. And then also down here, color stop, red. Don't put the pound sign or it won't work. Save that. Go back to command prompt, Cordova run Android or Cordova emulate Android or Cordova run browser to see the result. Just by simply running in the menu, it won't fully work. You want to run it now because it's an app. So just play with changing some of those colors. Cordova emulate Android. blinding red color. <clears throat> now a moment ago it was gray and then it became red. We were seeing a moment ago the splash screen. There's a splash screen that appears. We'll deal with that later. But um, also then I can go here, run Android, and we'll see it load up on my real device. It's got the splash screen, and then it's going to be bright red. There's a spot that's controlling the font and so forth. Now, I'm not going to mention every single thing here, because anyway, we've got our own project from last month that we're going to use. I'm just making a note that some of these things we might borrow from the template file. If we scroll down, portrait layout dot app, there's a div in the HTML file that has a class of app and it's saying in the background of that put the logo. There's a folder of images and it says put the logo. Where, where are we positioning it? Here's some padding and height and all of that. And then here we've got landscape layout. If someone goes horizontal um, this will switch over because we're looking at a screen that has these dimensions and then it'll put the it'll put it sideways but you can see yes Inline CSS. no this is this is not this is all being saved to a separate CSS file so it's not in line it's uh, it's, it's on a it's external on my real device if I tilt it over it goes sideways and then the pic the, the image is side by side to the text you can do that also in the virtual device. You can rotate your virtual device. If you go back to your virtual device, on the number pad, not, not the number row at the top, on the number pad, if you press 9, it rotates. If you press 7, it rotates back. You might have to turn the num lock off. 9 rotates to the side, and then you see how it rotates and then 7 rotates back. If, it, if 7 is not taking you back, turn off numlock. So what's taking, into, what's taking into effect is this. Media. Check the screen, and if its aspect ratio is 1 to 1, and if its width is a certain value, then position the background picture to the left instead of the center. We have some CSS about the H1. We have something called dot event, dot event listening, and dot event received. That'll I'll explain that more in the JavaScript file in just a moment. And then the animation that happens that we see glowing is set up right here. 
we're creating a fade animation. It's fading from 100% view to 40% view, back to 100, back and forth. Two ways to define the same thing. And then right here, we're saying anything that has a, a, a class of blink is going to fade in and fade out at three, in 3,000 milliseconds, in three seconds, infinitely. So if we want that to blink faster, let's go to line 13, 113, 114. If we want this to blink faster, we would make a smaller number. So if we change that to 300 and 300, 3,000 milliseconds is 3 seconds. There's 1,000 milliseconds in 1 second. And here I'm saying 300 milliseconds, so that's a third of a second. So this is going to blink faster. The fade in, fade out is going to happen in 300 milliseconds. So my workflow is that I make changes in Notepad like we did last month, save it everything, save everything, and then go back to command prompt and launch it that way. Here it's coming. Splash screen. There you go. Blinking 300 milliseconds. We can play with some of these other items like the color, but I'm going to move on here. The other important aspect of the project, line 47 on the HTML file, index.js. So if you go to your JavaScript folder, and let's edit to notepad the index file, let's look at it for a moment. Maybe we're going a bit fast, but we're going to do it again for real next time. This project that we're working on right now, you don't have to save it or take it with you. We're going to do it again next time, but for real, and really set it up as a template. Because the cool thing about using Cordova is, once you do Cordova Create and Cordova Add Platform and such, that folder is can be this test. You can simply copy the folder, give it a new name, and it's a brand new app. You don't have to go through the process again of Cordova Create App 2. That whole folder encompasses everything about that one app. Simply copy and pasting, as we'll see, creates a new project. But anyway, let's look at the JavaScript file for a moment. There's some magic going on here. Um, I'm going to skip all the way down to the bottom. App.initialize. We've seen console.log. What else? Um, Navigator.location, and so forth. We've seen an object and its method, a command and its object. Here we have the object app and its command, its method, initialize. There's no such thing, there's no such JavaScript called initialize that is defined within this JavaScript. So remember the trick in Notepad. If you double click a bit of code, it highlights throughout your project. If you double click initialize and we back up, we will see here line 21. Initialize is a function. The function has another function called bind events. That's also not standard JavaScript. Double click that, and that takes you down here. Find events is a function that has document.event add event listener. So to the document itself, there's an event listener. It's waiting for something. The JavaScript basically is waiting for something. It's waiting for a device ready. Something that says device ready. The HTML file this div has device ready. So JavaScript is basically checking. Whenever device ready is found within the HTML file, proceed with the launching of our app. And it's going to be found once this, once this loads, once this, once this HTML is rendered. Once device ready is found, then it's going to run the callback function on device ready. 
and false is just default behavior. But on device ready then is defined with here. On device ready is a function that it says once inside of your app uh, we have the uh, received event uh, method of device ready. Keep proceeding here. So it's kind of layers inside of layers. In in short, at the end, after this is sort of sort of um, safeguarding that the Cordova library has loaded, that the HTML uh, structure has loaded, because we wouldn't want our JavaScript to try to do something until the Cordova library has loaded. The Cordova library will allow us to take a photo, load up a contact, send a text message, all of that device stuff. But that device stuff won't work until the device has says it's ready, until it's all loaded. So this is just layers and safeguards um, to to prevent any functionality to happen before it's ready, putting the cart before the horse. So if in the end everything is good, if everything is good, we get the device ready. On screen, this is how we then see that the, um, the text that said, please wait, gets hidden, and the text that says, ready to rock, is displayed. And notice also console.log received event ID. So something's happening in the console that we were never paying attention to, really. So this very basic skeleton of, uh, of Cordova is going to be our stepping stone for when we come back. We're going to add our project from last month. We're going to see what things will change here, what we'll add to it, what we can mesh together, and then we'll keep going forward. We're going to bring in the project from last time and now start to make it a real Android project. And you're going to see that then it'll load as a real, as a real app. And we have much more to do, of course, but we're on our way. So as I wrap up the lecture, as I said earlier, this project, this test project, it's just test. It's just a test. We don't really need to work with it. We, you can take it if you want. Just drag it to your desktop. It's the complete project. Right now it's 27 megabytes. Um, if you don't want to take it with you, that's fine. But when we come back, we will start with the next uh, handouts. And if you'd like, I'm going to put then the next handout in there for you to take which is Cordova Workflow 2. So we haven't quite worked with Cordova Workflow 1. We'll do it more in detail next time. And if you're getting a little ahead, you can look at Cordova Workflow 2. So we're going to wrap up the main lecture, have a little lab time until 9.30, hopefully get a few more people's devices working. And then we'll do it again next week and go even further.